Prior to 1774, independent legislatures governed the colonies. As dissatisfaction with British rule grew, they appointed local committees of correspondence to promote working together. Still, though they communicated with one another, they mostly considered themselves as independent. This attitude changed with the unpopular Coercive Acts of 1774, which in part ordered colonists to house British soldiers. In response, the committees of correspondence called for a meeting of colonial representatives. 56 delegates from all colonies, except Georgia, met in Philadelphia on September 5, 1774, as the first Continental Congress. Delegates included George Washington, Richard Henry Lee, Patrick Henry, John Adams, Samuel Adams, and John Jay. And Peyton Randolph served as president of the Congress. The Congress produced two documents. The first, called the Declaration and Resolves, listed their objections to Parliament's laws and detailed the colonists' rights such as life, liberty, and property. The second, the Articles of Association, was an agreement by the 12 colonies to boycott British goods until the Coercive Acts were repealed. The First Continental Congress ended on October 26, 1774 agreeing to reconvene in May 1775 to discuss Great Britain's response to its demand. Yet when the Second Continental Congress reconvened in May 1775, it had new priorities. American blood had been shed at the hands of British soldiers in the battles of Lexington and Concord on April 19, 1775. The Congress decided to form the 16,000 volunteers still surrounding Boston into a real military. And George Washington, one of the few delegates with military experience, agreed to command the new Continental Army. The formation of an army makes it seem like the Continental Congress, now including Georgia, was set on independence, but this wasn't the case. The Congress split into three factions. Conservatives wanted a return to the relationship prior to 1763 in the course of Acts. The Radicals, led by Sam and John Adams, wanted complete independence from Great Britain. But the majority agreed with Thomas Jefferson, who wanted to remain in the empire out of loyalty to King George III, but disapproved of Parliament's authority over the colonies. This moderate position was apparent in the Olive Branch Petition, which the Continental Congress approved on July 5, 1775. The Olive Branch Petition essentially requested a negotiation of tax and trade policies. But King George III received the news about the Battle of Bunker Hill and the petition on the same day. He was so incensed by the former that he refused to negotiate with colonial leaders and instead escalated military action against them. The members of the Second Continental Congress were now wanted for treason, but they continued to act as the governing body of the American colonies and did so throughout the American Revolution. They authorized the printing of money, which would help fund army supplies. It was certain the colonies would need the assistance of foreign allies if a long-term war with Great Britain developed. So the Congress also established a committee to build relationships with foreign governments. Yet until the beginning of 1776, very few people publicly supported colonial independence. <laughs> 